me. By now, there's nothing more for me to say. Anyway, my chest is full of pride right now. Everyone is united against despair. They're totally awesome. That's why I'm gonna fight too. I will fight the only way I can. I'm gonna show that guy my fearsome retaliation. That's basically it. So if we're working together, where do we start? With the cause of death missing from the Monokuma file? Why don't we try removing all our preconceived notions before we discuss this? In the beginning, our discussion advanced by assuming Nagito's death was caused by the spear. It's better to confirm if there are any other possibilities. That's what I think. Other possibilities? If something other than the spear killed Nagito, all I can think of is the knife stabbed into his hand, but... That was definitely a gruesome wound, but it wouldn't be the fatal wound, don't you think? Hmm. If you think the cuts on his legs and left arm aren't the fatal wounds... Hmm. Are we finished already? I feel like... It's possible that we overlook something. Then let's bring up whatever we can think of, one after the other. That might clear some things up. Exactly! We should cooperate at a time like this. Different fatal wound. It's not the knife in his right hand, right? It's not the other wounds, right? With all those wounds, maybe he simply bled to death. There's no way he bled to death. Was the cause of death something that cannot be seen? If it's something that can't be seen, maybe he choked himself with a sleeper hand. Or liquefied his guts with a body blow! Just thinking about it, that's already a horrible death. Let us consider a different fatal wound. It's not the knife in his right hand, right? It's not the other wounds, right? With all those wounds... Maybe he simply bled to death. There's no way he burned to death. Was the cause of death something that cannot be seen? I agree with that. That's it. I totally forgot about that possibility. If the cause of death was something we can't see, then we have to consider poison as a possible method. It is true that poison is not something we can see, but why did you bring that up all of a sudden? I remember. When I went to investigate Nagito's cottage, I discovered something really strange. Inside the refrigerator, I found a bottle of Monokuma's special poison. Poison? Additionally, that's a poison made specifically for killing. I see. Now that you mention it, there's no way a toxin like that doesn't relate to the case at all. If, if poison was the cause of death, it would not leave an obvious wound on Nagito's body. However, it's common for blood blotches to appear on a body that's been poisoned. I see. You sure seem to know a lot about medicine. What does that mean? Yes, even if blood blotches appear, if the body was already covered in blood, there's no way we'd notice them easily, right? Did, did he wound his body just to camouflage them? That's also a possibility. But still, both of Nagito's hands were full, so how would he drink poison? His left hand was tied up and gripping the spear, 
and his right hand had a knife stuck in it. If it was a slow-acting poison, it is possible he consumed it in advance. No. The warning label on the bottle explicitly states the effect is instant. Then it's impossible. Both his hands were full just before he died. And this is when the hard tail appears! You're totally overvaluing that tail! His mouth was covered with duct tape. If he wanted to drink poison, how do you get it past his lips? If there's no way he could have drank the poison, it might be impossible. Just kidding. It's not like we're out of possibilities yet. Are there any left? Hell no! No matter how you slice it, he was totally killed by that spear! Since we've already ruled out so many possibilities, it might be easier to think about what really killed him. Operation Elimination Method! The hint should be written on the poison's warning label. Maybe. Coming together! What if instead of drinking the poison, we assume he inhaled it? Inhaled? It's written on the poison's warning label. Dangerous when vaporized. In other words, breathing in the gas is fatal. Poison gas! Then all he had to do was breathe it in through his nose! He breathed that poisonous gas inside the warehouse? But if poisonous gas had spread throughout the warehouse, why didn't it kill us? The sprinklers in the warehouse. Thanks to those, we didn't inhale that poison gas. The poison gas disappeared because of the sprinklers? It wasn't the fire? Well, this was also written on the poison's warning label. Hydrolysis! The 
chemical bonds that form the poison were broken down by the water from the sprinklers. Also, the poison is apparently denser than air, so it probably didn't affect us as we were standing. But Nakito was lying down, so he must have breathed in a whole bunch of it, huh? If it meets the requirements that well, maybe it's not just a possibility anymore. Yeah, the true cause of Nagito's death was poisoning. The wounds on his body, the spear in his stomach, it was all to keep us from learning the truth. So what? Huh? We figured out that Nagito died from poison, but so what? In the end, it doesn't change the fact that he committed suicide, right? Then enough already! Nagito inhaled the poison he prepared and died. Yeah, that still sounds like a suicide. Well, with this, we have a clearer picture. We've also determined the true cause of death. Alright, all the mysteries should be solved now. We should get on with the voting time, right? Oh, well, but... What? There's still more? Hey, what happened? There's no reason to wonder about that stuff anymore, you know. There might have been... an accomplice. Ch Chiaki! What did you just say? If Nagito committed suicide by inhaling poison that he brought, then why wasn't there anything that looked like poison at the crime scene? Anything that looked like poison? If Nagito brought poison to the warehouse, it's strange that we couldn't find it there. I see! Are you talking about the container the poison was kept in? Yeah. If Nagito brought it, it's strange we couldn't find that container anywhere, right? You can't carry around poison without putting it in a container? Yeah, that was written on the warning label. Probably melted in the fire. It's probably plastic or glass, right? There's no way it completely incinerated. Even the plastic fragments of the fire grenades we used to put out the fire didn't completely burn up, you know? Then, does that mean someone got rid of the container? So that's why you mentioned an accomplice! Impossible! I mean... An accomplice? It is just too... Like... Does that really matter all that much? I mean... Even if he had an accomplice... It doesn't change the fact that Nagito still committed suicide. You're right. Someone might have accidentally took it away from the crime scene. You're right! You're totally right! That's totally it! Right? Isn't it okay to close this case yet? I'm not in the mood for unexpected twists. No good. Huh? I feel like Nagito is seeing through us. 
By calling this Nagito suicide, we're trying to take the easy way out so we don't hurt anyone else. But if Nagito was here right now, he'd probably be sneering at us. He'd probably say something like, So that's the extent of your hopes. So Nagito's ghost is whispering to you, huh? <laughs> the power of friendship bursts beyond death, huh? A fiery outcome like this is right out of a teen manga! Still, that's pretty messed up! Shut up! You just be quiet! I, I get what you're saying, but... In the end, the reason he died is still the same as before, right? Even if we solve this mystery, the conclusion won't change at all. I mean... It'd be a suicide regardless, right? Uh, even if there really was an accomplice, is there any reason we should take the time to figure out who it is? Like Fuyuhiko said earlier, it is possible that somebody accidentally removed the poison from the crime scene. But I just can't imagine ending this by turning our backs on the truth. It's fine, okay? There are some things we're better off not knowing. And we probably just didn't notice it. Like maybe the container was hiding with the fire grenade fragments. poison inside one of the fire grenade canisters and transported it to the warehouse. He used one of the fire grenade canisters? Yeah, the container with the poison in it wasn't secretly taken away by someone. Instead, it was in a container that didn't need to be taken away in the first place. As long as he put the poison in the same container he brought to the warehouse, It can be hidden with the other fire grenades we used, so there's no need to dispose of the container later. Bastard. I totally knew we were gonna throw those fire grenades. Which means... Did Nagito exchange the contents of a fire grenade? Yeah, that has to be it. When I first discovered those fire grenades, I tried to study them a little bit, but... The canister was completely sealed shut by a layer of aluminum underneath the lid. You just have to peel off that seal and swap the insides, right? The... that is true, but... There was no sign he was even at the break room. 
Hold on. Did you say aluminum? Hajime, could it be? If so, then there's no mistake. Nagito definitely swapped the contents of one of the fire grenades. Seriously? That's impossible! Miss Sonia just said so right now! Sonia's words are proof that the poison was swapped with the contents of a fire grenade. Huh? I can prove it with this! Take a look. We found this under Nagito's bed when we were investigating his cottage. Huh? That's just a piece of trash. No, that is not just a piece of trash. The seal I saw on that fire grenade matched this. It is the same aluminum. You found the aluminum seal under Nagito's bed? There's more. That's not the only thing we found in Nagito's room. He also found a gas mask and gloves under his bed, too. Did he use those when he put the poison inside the fire grenade? It's a dangerous poison, after all. He took extreme caution when swapping them. So, what's the issue? Nagito put the poison in the grenade canister, brought it with him, breathed it in and died, right? So in the end, he still fucking committed suicide! Enough already! Y you're right. If the canister wasn't thrown away, then it just means that there wasn't an accomplice after all. See, I told you. The conclusion is still the same. Nagito committed suicide. End of story. I admit that there wasn't an accomplice. That was just my misunderstanding. You, you're right. In actuality, the truth is even more horrifying. What did you say? Hey, what are you planning to say now? What the hell? Do you still want to keep going? Is this not settled? There is no denying that Nagito's death was a suicide. No, it's not. J Jockey? I'm sorry, but I just realized it. Realized what? We know Nagito used the grenade canister to store the poison. So when was it deployed in the warehouse? When did Nagito breathe in the poison? When I thought along those lines, that's when I realized it. Horrifying truth? It probably happened at the same time. I see! Are you saying it was when we all threw the fire grenades? Yeah, I think so. All threw the grenades to put out the fire in the warehouse. The poison was deployed, and it converted to poison gas and killed Nagito. If, if that is true, then the person who brought the poison and spread it was... One of us. What the heck? One of us threw the poison grenade that killed Nagito? Hold on a sec! The Nagito was... It would mean... He didn't kill himself. You said so yourself! You said Nagito committed suicide! The, then who killed Nagito? You mean... Who's the actual killer, right? Do you know? Who prepared the poison fire grenade that killed Nagito? I see! It 
is Nagito, obviously. We just discussed this a few minutes ago. And the Usoka warehouse fire that caused one of us to throw the poison grenade. I see! That was also Nagito. Hey, how many times are you gonna ask the same damn question? The next question will be my last. Considering all the facts up till now, why did Nagito set the warehouse on fire? I see! Don't tell me, he... He set the warehouse on fire just so we'd have to throw the fire grenades? He set the fire just so we'd put it out? Why'd he do that? It was a trap. A trap? Preparing the poison. Creating a reason for us to throw the poison. It was all a setup by Nagito. It was all a trap to make one of us throw the poison grenade. S-seriously. I'm asking you who threw it! I don't know. The person who threw it probably didn't know either. Huh? Could, could it be? Was that Nagito's trap? This wasn't an intentional murder. This was a murder that Nagito forced someone to do. And for that reason... He put the fire grenade that he filled with poison with the other grenades. Setting up a murder nobody can solve! That was Nagito's true goal! What? What the hell? Nagito did not commit murder. Instead, he manipulated someone else into killing him? To do that, he set a trap to force someone to kill him. The poison grenade and the fire were traps. That's why the curtain was the fire's origin point. All the fire grenades we threw at the curtain shattered once they fell to the floor. Because of that, Nagito, who was laying face up on the floor, was able to breathe in the dense poison. And then... Hold on! If that's true, you can't say the poison was the cause of death! It might be the poison's fault he let go of the spear, but the actual cause of death could be either one. Even so, the poison is what caused him to let go of the spear. That's right! Nagito's killer is the one who made him breathe the poison! Are you fucking serious? was his trap all along. Even the wounds all over his body, it was all to mess with the evidence for what actually happened. His true goal was creating a murder that nobody can solve. He wanted to prove to us that there are mysteries that just can't be solved with educated guesses. He probably expected that his fake suicide would be found out. After all, a mystery that can be solved is destined to be solved in the end! However, he also prepared a mystery that couldn't be solved! As you solve mysteries and bolster your hope, a huge mystery comes along and slaps you in your faces! For those of you who believe there are no unsolvable mysteries, that is when you finally taste despair! Meaning, he used all of the prior class trial verdicts to prepare this trick! Not all mysteries can be solved! <laughs> Such a devious trick he played on you, as expected of Nagito! That's totally messed up! That's so fucked up! It is my fault! Because I told you all about the fire grenades. 
I... I am so sorry! Please vote me as a killer! That's not the fucking issue here! It's not M Miss Sonia's fault! This is all Nagito's doing! But... what should we do? How can we even figure out who the killer is? It's impossible. It impossible? Nagito wanted to create a scenario where we couldn't make a decision. That's why we're at an impasse. Huh. However, Monokuma also does not know who the killer is, right? That's right! There's no way he'd be able to figure that out with just his surveillance cameras! If Monokuma doesn't know, his trial doesn't count! Isn't that right? You know, I don't actually need stuff like cheap-ass surveillance cameras or whatever. I know perfectly well what's happening on this island at all times! I know you used the bathroom three times yesterday, Sonya! And one of those visits seemed to take a while. Uh, please stop! I will never become clean! I mean, how can you have such an awful power? So, of course this trial still counts. Do your very best to guess who the killer is! Yes, he says. How the hell are we supposed to do that? Is giving up all we can do? No, it's too early to give up. Is there any way to figure out who the killer is? Even though it's just a hunch, it's possible that it's probably... There's one way, I think.